Hello, welcome to the class of UAV. So today we are going to discuss about UAV cellular network. So in this chapter, we are going to discuss about the cellular radio communication link and BLO, BLOS and VLS link. So starting with the very first, that is radio communication link. So communication is a key in US system due to remote nature of human presence. So here under LOS and BLOS conditions, three type of radio communications are there. The first one is radio communication in conjunction with air traffic control relay, radio uh, communication for UAV command and control, and radio communication for the sense and avoid function. So starting with the very first, that is radio communication in conjunction with air traffic control relay. So here in non-segregated airspace, is, it means the airspace that is not divided. The link between ATC, that is air traffic control and UAC is through UAV or the drone is called ATC relay. So here it is used to uh, relay ATC and air-to-air -air communication received and transmitted by UAV or the drone. So for communicating with ATC, the UAV use the same equipment as the main aircraft. That means it is using the downlink and uplink. So downlink is used for gi uh, giving the ATC information from UAV to UACS and in uplink, the ATC information is shared from UACS to the UAV. So here there is a, some disadvantage of this network that is uh, the radio communication in conjunction with air traffic control relay that is the communication are critical for a safe management of controlled airspace especially in the case of where there is high density of aircraft. So for this the future ICO standards are mandatory for these kind of communications are required. The second is radio communication for UAV command and control. So here the command and control is the typical link between UACS and the UAV. So the following two way of communications are used here. The first one is uplink and second one is downlink. So in uplink, it is uh, used to send telecommands to the aircraft for flight and navigation equipment control and in downlink it is used to send telemetry for example flight status from a UAV to the UACS. So this is the radio communication for UAV command and control. So in radio communication with uh, communication using command and control here for that in command and control process the sensor will provide the remote control regulatory compliance like the location update services, identification, flight planning, collision avoidance and status monitoring. Whereas in pay, uh, the camera will provide the payload like it will provide the video in HD and 3D format and it will provide UAV delivery communication services with backhaul and peer-to-peer -peer communication and it will also provide the environmental information. The third one is radio communication in support of sense and avoid. So here the sense and avoid means and the piloting principle that is see and avoid. So it is used in all airspace volumes where the pilot is responsible for ensuring separation from nearby aircraft, train and obstacle for example the weather. So to determine the appropriate spectrum requirement related to C and avoid function there are two main aspects like firstly all the RF equipment designed to collect raw data related to sense function will have a specific requirement depending upon the ITU R service involved. Secondly the control of the proper operation of this C and avoid function will be permanently regularly checked by the UACS. So these are the two concepts that must be followed when we are, have to implement or determine the appropriate spe spectrum requirement for this C and avoid function. The next is VLOS link in US that is visual line of sight link. So here as per the ITUR report M2171 the following uh, the following figure will depict the link and the spectrum requirement for visual line of sight deployment. So here in visual line of sight uh, deployment the ATC and UAC is directly communicating with UAV because they have a visual line of sight communication. So here the uplink uh, process is like from UACS to UAV and downlink processes UAV to UACS and here the spectrum requirement is of LOS equals to 34 megahertz. So here the uh, drone is directly communicating with ATC as well as UACS. 
The second one is BLOS link in US. BLOS stand for Beyond Line of Sight link. Beyond Line of Sight means this drone is not directly communicating with ATC and UACS. So here it is communicating with the help of satellite. So if the drone is near to ATC but it is not near to UAC then the communication is done with the help of satellite. So there are two, uh, two process forward link and the re reverse link. So in the forward link uh, there are two, um, two links uplink and downlink. In uplink process UACS will communicate, communicate with satellite. Uh, and the information is sent from UACS to satellite whereas in downlink the communication is or the information is sent from satellite to UAV whereas in the reverse link the uplink, uh, in uplink process the information is sent from UAV to satellite and in downlink the satellite will send the information to UACS so this is the forward and reverse link so in uplink the UACS is sending the information to satellite so this is sending the information to satellite and in downlink the satellite is sending the information to UAV. Whereas in the reverse link here the uplink in uplink process UAV is sending information to UAV and whereas in downlink process the satellite is getting the information to the UACS. So here the spectrum requirement is of 46 megahertz. So this, these are the two link that is visual line of sight and beyond line of sight link in UACS. So the fre frequency band requirement in UACS are there are category uh, uh, category of small US that mostly use the unlicensed band of 2.4 gigahertz, 5.8 gigahertz and unlicensed 900 megahertz and UH, UHF band for communication that is ultra high frequency band for the communication. Here the WRC12 allocated the frequency band 5030 to 5091 MHz to be used for the terrestrial RPS control link. RPS stands for remotely piloted aircraft system. Whereas WRC15 it will identify the various spectrum to be used by satellite system controlling drones. So here the example for this are like in region 1 they are using 12.5 to 12.75 GHz space to earth and uh, it is also using 14.0 to 14.47 gigahertz from earth to space so there are three reasons reason one reason two and reason three and it is defining the frequencies that is used from space to earth and earth, earth to space in satellite communication so these are the frequency bands used by us us system next is challenges faced by us network using cellular network so there are three challenges that are faced by the uh, US by deploying the cellular network. The first one is interface mitigation. So as the US receives signal from multiple base station when when it is present in the ear then it is and then it is going through the interference because every base station is sending some signals to the aircraft. Whereas in handover optimi uh, optimization there is same process like UAV is getting the signal from multiple base station which results into handover and it lead to the heavy signaling overload over to the aircraft. Whereas cellular network optimization here the cellular network must capable of differentiating the UAV from UE for optimal operation of US in cellular network. It means the cellular network must know about, uh, about the aircraft as well as the mobile users that are using the same cellular network. So these are the three challenges that can be faced by the US network by deploying these network into the cellular network. So this is all about cellular network. Thank you.